And today we're making a delicious Tuscan beef stew. It's called peposo. It has like a few ingredients. It's perfect for fall and winter. Let's get into it right now. So this is a really small amount of ingredients. I have two and a half pounds of beef chuck that I cut up into one inch chunks. I have one and a half tablespoons of black pepper that I put in a towel and I attempted to crush in front of you. Black pepper sauce, it sounds great, right? I just think it sounds great. I have about eight or 10 cloves of garlic, red wine, uh, Chianti, Sangiovese. You can use a uh, Super Tuscan, any 10 to like 12, $13 bottle of wine, maybe $15 bottle of wine would be great. That all being said, guys, this is still a relatively inexpensive dish. We're gonna be able to get four to six servings out of this. This chuck was $4.99 a pound. So it's $10, about 12, let's say. We got about 20 something dollars worth of ingredients here. And I have a loaf of bread. So this loaf of bread is a Tuscan, called Tuscan bread from the supermarket. It looks good. Traditionally, this recipe is done with is served with, with a loaf of bread. I think to make it nicer and to really extend this meal, we're gonna do some polenta later on. So I have about a cup and a quarter. I'm gonna cook this in a Dutch oven. We're gonna do it on the stove top the whole time. All right, I'm gonna heat this up to medium heat. While I'm heating this up, dry off the beef with paper towels very well because we wanna get a good sear on it. All right, so both sides, just try to dry it off as best you can. A little bit over two pounds of beef, so I'm gonna use about two teaspoons of kosher salt. Basically, use about three quarter teaspoon to one teaspoon per pound of meat. We're using salt, guys. We want things to taste good. If you can't use salt, then don't use it. That's it. You're gonna put a couple tablespoons of olive oil down here, and then we're gonna put our beef in, but we're only going to put a few pieces in at a time. We just don't wanna crowd it so it'll get a good sear. And you'll hear it right away. Four or five minutes total to do your beef if your pot's hot enough. Right when it gets brown, after about two minutes, turn it over to the other side. See that nice color? Yeah, that looks great. Just like that, you want it. All right, so we're gonna flip these over and another two minutes, then we will do each subsequent batch. You know, you have salt on there, so it might have like get a little bit of water coming out of here. You can just give a little bit of pat. Don't worry, your salt, your salt will be all right in there. And then just get them right back down again. So it's gonna take me three batches here to do this. I didn't go into it with you guys. I didn't trim really any fat here. This was a kind of relatively lean chuck roast. Um, some will be more, this is grass fed. Some roast you get will just have a lot more fat. You can trim some of that. You can save that fat too for another purpose. And I forgot something and I'm showing you guys and I love to show you the mistakes and I know you guys know I don't set them up this way. I wanted to put the garlic in first and then pull the garlic out. We're still gonna use it, but I wanted to flavor the oil with it. So I'll do it now that one batch didn't get hit. It'll be okay. All right, just get them all in there. Yeah, I wanted that oil to get permeated with the garlic flavor. And you know, I don't wanna burn my garlic, so you can pull it out a couple minutes. There is something so, I don't know what it is, when it comes to beef, more than any other thing, more than chicken, pork, whatever, when you smell that beef hitting the pot there, especially like a high fat beef like Chuck. Guys, I lowered the heat, all the beef is done, all right, it's looking good. Save all those juices, all that delicious beef. Look at that garlic, look how good that looks. I'm gonna put all the pepper, guys, into the pot. Pretty dry in that pot there, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit more oil, and I'm just gonna let this carmeate for about 30 seconds. Bloom in that pepper, and oh man, it's coming up right now in, in, in there. Okay, that's all you gotta do is 30 seconds or so. And then you gotta open up, open up your wine as fast as you can. All right, put your head back. 
Oh, smells so good. Flat edge will make it a little easier, guys. Now you can turn your heat up to about medium high or high. We're just gonna scrape off all the brown bits on the bottom and we're gonna let this come to a boil for just a couple of minutes. Been going for about two minutes, it's been boiling. I'm gonna lower the heat now down to medium low. Let's get all the juices and all of the beef right in there. Gonna put the garlic in. All those cloves, we use them to kind of like infuse the beef with the garlic flavor. Well, the second batch onward we did. So let's just tuck this in here. Lid covered for an hour and a half to two hours. All right, guys, it's been an hour and a half. So I've been every 30 minutes or so just opening it up and just moving it around. It's not sticking at all though because you have plenty of liquid in there. We can check our beef right now. It's still fairly hard there. Normally for chuck, it's gonna take, for, for pieces this size, it's normally gonna take about two and a half to three hours. What we're going to do right now is cook it without the cover. That's gonna reduce this liquid down a lot. I have it on about, about three and a half to four out of 10. I want like this very, very low simmering, bubbling. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Gia. So it's September right now, the kids are back in school. Tara and I are preparing holiday content and all the content for the beginning of 2023. The days are long and we often feel like we wanna relax with a drink, but don't want to feel like crap the next day. And it's important for us to be present for our kids. So when we found Gia, we felt like we hit the jackpot. Gia is a non-alcohol aperitif that's inspired by the Mediterranean flavors we both love. It's both bright and bitter and actually reminds me of a Negroni. Gia has tons of recipes to help you create fantastic mocktails like Gia Colada and the Gia Godfather. And for on the go, they have cans of La Spritz, which are ready to drink pairings like their lime and salt, which is perfect for the beach. And now they're offering a great bundle, the First Sip Kit, which has everything you need to try Gia for the very first time. It includes a mini bottle of the aperitif, a fancy pour spout, and two cans of Gia soda, one can of Gia ginger, and one can of the lime and salt. So guys, if you're looking for all the spirit and none of the booze, check out Gia. They rarely do discounts, but they're offering 20% off this month for my community. Use my link, drinkgia.com forward slash sip and feast, and use code sip and feast at checkout. Big thanks to Gia for sponsoring today's video. I like to do about five parts water to one part polenta. Here I have four tablespoons of butter, one cup of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. I'm gonna turn the heat up here to about medium heat and just to speed things up, I heated up my five parts water, which to me translates to six and a quarter cups of, of water, but just remember five parts to whatever you do. You might not wanna make this much polenta or you might wanna make more and just whisk it to um, get, get rid of any lumps. The plant is gonna absorb the water, so it's gonna look like very liquidy now, and in, in a matter of minutes, it's gonna start to get thicker. Okay, it's bubbling a lot, so I'm gonna keep lowering it. If it starts getting crazy like this, just pull it off the heat, and that will stop it a little bit. Try to lower it again. Try to not get it all over your shirt. Well, I want to normally do it about a three and a half out of 10. Let my polenta cook. Basically every couple minutes just come by and just grab the sides so you don't get like a lot of dry spots on the sides and just push it back in there. All right guys, polenta's been going for about 30 minutes. Again, I don't, you don't have to like be on top of it stirring constantly. I, I'll get a lot of comments from the last one saying like, you don't have to cook polenta that long. I, I cook it in 20 minutes. Um, I mean, you can cook it in that 20 minutes, but it won't fully be hydrated. You will have gritty parts to it. You know, if you just look at it here, and it's hard to see, but it's these little white specks that are in it. It's not, it's not done yet. I mean, it's not, it's definitely not as good as it can be. It's kind of the consistency that I'm going for there. With this much polenta, I know I'm gonna need a good amount of salt. So I'm gonna put in about one and a half teaspoons to start, a four tablespoons of butter. I tasted the stew, which is over there. It is unbelievable. It's so good. I think the taste tester is gonna love it. I'm pretty sure of it. And then I have basically a cup, about a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. We can add that in there. And you can turn the heat off too, but just get it seasoned to your liking. I'm gonna taste it after I mix this cheese in to make sure there's enough salt in there. Pretty 
pretty good. I'm gonna put just a little bit more salt. About a half a teaspoon more. You just have a, you have a lot of plenty here. You have a blank can canvas, so you have to season it up. All right, so you can see how much is, this has reduced. And the beef is tender, and we'll show you. So right there, that looks, that's extremely tender. Okay, that's breaking apart. Make sure you test a few pieces. Some of them, you know, depending on, you know, how thick you cut them or the part of it won't be as tender. That's ultra tender too. These are all tender. It took two hours and 45 minutes of cooking. And then here's the liquid. So we're about, we have about an inch of liquid in the pot and it's very loose here. This dish traditionally is supposed to have loose liquid like this you would pretty much be done here. What you can do, if you want to, remove your beef with a slotted spoon, set it off to the side, cover it with foil just to keep it warm, and then put this on to high, and then you will reduce it. If you don't want to reduce it, but you want to have all that liquid, turn it on to about medium, medium high, mix up one tablespoon of um, cornstarch with one ounce of water, make, make a slurry, mix it in there, and you will then thicken it. So do you think I should leave it thin like this? So I'm yeah. Gonna with that. I'm gonna listen to my wife and leave it thin like this. This is the way it's supposed to be. I'm gonna mention one more thing, and this will only improve your dish. It will improve your bolognese. It will improve your uh, any ragu you make. It will improve really anything, even chili. Let it cool. Put it in your refrigerator. Tomorrow morning, you're gonna get a fat, basically a puck of fat that's gonna rise to the top. You can remove that, and then you essentially have degreased your whole entire sauce. But that's not the really important thing. You can eat you can eat fat. I mean, we eat fat all the time. What's important is the flavors will concentrate much more and it will taste even better. But I gotta tell you, I already did the taste test. This is amazing. I think the taste tester's gonna love it. So we'll get them down right now. It looks so good. Okay, what do you take a smell? What do you what do you smell with the predominant thing? Beef. The beef, yeah. Everything's hot. All right, so just just be careful. What do you taste in that sauce? I don't know. So guys, the red wine cooks out. It's three hours of cooking. So not nothing to worry about there. Remember the other major ingredient I put in there. That's why I'm asking him if he does, he can't, he's not sure what it is. What and is it? It's pepper. We put one and a half. Oh, I just taste it right now. Okay, one and a half tablespoons of pepper. A lot of pepper, you would think like it would be overpowering, but it mellows out as it cooks for that long period of time. I smelled this earlier and it smelled so good. So I was really excited to have this. Let me have a bite, please. Do you have this yet? No, I, I, I tested the sauce. By the way, guys, I tested the sauce. It didn't need any salt, definitely didn't need any pepper. We were good. Mm. Oh man, that is, Okay, oh, before I, I'm sorry for doing that. I'm not trying to influence him and get to get a 10 right now. <laughs> I'm just like, it's really good. I don't want to be influencing you. I really like the polenta. I love polenta. I feel like it's like, not the polenta. I mean, I you don't like, want to eat polenta by itself. No, I mean, like with the sauce and stuff, the yeah. beef is really good too. Um. Yeah, there, I taste the pepper now that you said that. Um, I'm gonna give it a nine and a half. Nine and a half? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that, that's a really good grade because I know he wanted to do a 10 there, but we're, we're, we're breaking away from the 10s. Mm -hmm. The 10s are only for like where he just like pushes me out of the way and just starts eating everything. You know? I have a question, James. Does it need more pepper? Like, would you put, I know you're like, you love pepper. It needs more would, salt. Would you put more pepper on it? It needs more salt? No way, right? You think so? No. It's bread. Two, James, you wanna try? Yeah. Here you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like it a lot with the bread. Mm. What about serving that in like a bread bowl? Like a hollowed out? Mm. It's even better with the bread. You agree, right? Mm -hmm. As good as it is with the polenta, Get yourself a good loaf of bread and it makes it even easier for you.